Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. I want to thank you all for your wonderful, encouraging comments that you left me on my last video. They meant so much to me. And now I want to do a little Bible teaching because I've been reading my emails and watching some of the videos. Well, actually all of them. There weren't that many. Um, but here's the thing. Some of the videos I've watched were prophecies that were supposedly from the Lord. Now, they could be, but they're not for the bride. They are not for those who are going in the first rapture. And I have scriptures pulled up that I would like to remind everybody why we can know that not everybody is destined for the same thing that these Gospels talk about. Why in Luke alone, there's at least three different groups he's talking about. Alright, let me pull up. I've got three parts, of, all from blueletterbible.org, O-R-G, to read for you. Hopefully this won't be too long. But I wanted to start with Matthew 24, starting with, let's see here. There's so much in Matthew, but I want to specifically talk about uh, for in the days of Noah. All right. Now, he just got through saying, that it truly, in verse 34, truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. Okay, what things? The things he spoke about earlier in Matthew, you can go back and read that. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But heaven and earth are not passing away yet. That comes after the thousand year millennial reign. Okay, I've actually heard people say that heaven and earth are going to pass away and Jesus is going to make a new heaven and a new earth uh, like when he comes back for his second coming. And that's not right. He does come back at the end of seven years. That'll be his second coming. That's when he'll rescue Israel. And a lot of people think the scriptures that talk about that have to do with the church. And they don't. Okay, this is just a reminder or maybe a teaching for someone who is new and hasn't heard it yet. I want to remind you. Not to fall into fear at these so-called words from the Lord talking about how we're going through the tribulation. Or we got so much more to go through before it's time for the rapture. Well, we may go through more live exercises like we just went through it's about to be over so i hear and then other sources are talking like oh no mainstream media of course we won't be able to socialize until 2022 and then they'll want us 13 feet apart and i just listened to a guy that was telling how all this was bogus bs even six feet a virus cannot live that long in the air it would come out and you, if you coughed I mean you would have to maybe sneeze but I mean I hope if nothing else this this virus thingy going on all the quarantining the washing of your hands has taught people to be aware of if you're going to sneeze use your use your inner arm not your hands, because even a common cold 
can really affect someone with an immune system dysfunction. Let's face it, people, there's so many immune problems these days, so many people with chronic illness, and their bodies just might not be able to handle one more thing. And don't you think the powers that be know that? Well, anyway, let me get back to this. I was just trying to say, keep up the good practices of washing your hands, sneezing and coughing into your elbow, even when they lift all this stuff. But 13 feet, that's ridiculous. We got a hug. People need hugs. Crying out loud. Even when everything's going well, it's just the way humans are. High-fiving, shaking hands. That's why you wash your hands. Okay, let's move on. But of that, okay, he said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But of that day, now this is a new paragraph. But of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but the Father alone. So what is he talking about? I mean, if you go all the way up to 29, the glorious return. Now listen to this. I'm backed up to Matthew 24, 29. I should have started here. But immediately after the tribulation of those days. Now here's where people get. We got to go through it and then Jesus returns. Okay. It's in here. The sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. And the stars will fall from the sky and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Now, it could be talking about the tribulation we're going through right now. Or is it talking, which is birth pains, I, I call it. It is a tribulation, but it isn't the great tribulation. It isn't God's wrath being poured out. It's what the powers that be are doing. There's also words from the Lord saying, uh, why are you saying that 5G has anything to do with this? This is my uh, plague, or this is a plague, and I have allowed it to cause you to repent. Why is nobody repenting? Well, because they're, they're, we've all, a lot of us that have our eyes opened think, God for that. No, this thing is a, a sham. They're pumping up the numbers. They've admitted it. That if you come in and they just suspect you have COVID and you die of a heart attack or you have pneumonia already from aspirating whatever because you were laughing during dinner a week ago, that will give you pneumonia. It sure will happen. My father had a stroke. So he had problems swallowing. He got aspiration pneumonia at least three times before he got it. The I think the fourth time did him in. Or it could have been the third time. He died of pneumonia from aspirating on his food. He had to eat it liquefied. Bless his heart. Can you imagine? But anyway, even with liquids, he would choke and swallow it down and it'd go in his lungs. That had to be rough. Anyway, I'm getting off track. The point is, if they suspected COVID, they put it on your death certificate, even though you died from aspiration pneumonia. Or even if you were 83 years old and fell into a door jam and that's what killed you. But they suspected you might have COVID-19 and wrote it on your death certificate. 
that is wrong. And that was to pump up the numbers so they could meet their agenda to get us all scared, wearing masks, obeying. And now that people are finding out how empty the hospitals are, how they're laying off nurses because they're not doing elective surgeries or anything that's not an immediate emergency, you know what I mean, people are putting two and two together and they're coming up with four and they're protesting so they figured they'd better say something and they've kind of admitted it in a roundabout kind of a way and yet there were words coming out saying according to the Lord why are you this and that uh, why is nobody repenting when I have a I have a loud plague. Use discernment. Use discernment. It's starting to make me mad. Satan is just getting away with too much. And that makes me mad. Okay, so. There is a, immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. Which could be a clue. It could be a new moon. And the stars will fall from the sky. Now, are those literal stars? Or are they pieces of an asteroid going by? I don't know. And the powers of the heavens will be shaken. The powers. Most likely, that means Satan and his fallen ones. It's a small p, and what I like about the King James is if it has anything to do with God, it's capitalized. The powers of the heavens will be shaken. And then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn. And they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of the sky with power and great glory. Now, this is why I believe this is the second rapture. Okay? Because all the tribes of the earth will mourn when they see Jesus coming on the clouds with power and great glory. Now how does the whole world see this? If he's coming down in one spot from the heavens and we're spinning. Do you see him and then not see him and see him and then not see him but it goes so fast that it looks like you're seeing him. Like when you're flipping through a comic that each drawing is a teeny weeny bit different and it looks like a little moving picture book. You think that's how it is? Well, whatever. And he will send forth his angels with a great trumpet and they will gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of the sky to the other. There's another clue. From one end of the sky to the other. This could be the first one. If it is, then their little trick of alien, dis alien invasion took us. Won't work, will it? Okay, just think about it for a minute. This is saying that all the tribes of the earth will see it. Will see Jesus coming and they will mourn because, oh my gosh, we should have believed. All right, you can't help but cry in the presence of the Lord anyway. Now, the parable of the fig tree gives you the... Well, I'll just read it. Now learn the parable from the fig tree. When its branches already become tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. Is that a clue? I'm asking. Could be. 
So you too, when you see all these things, recognize that he is near, right at the door. Well, we're not going to see him coming in glory and gathering the elect, are we? Or is he talking to the Jews now? I'm posing a question. I'm making a point. Truly, I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. Now, I know that has to do with the blo blossoming of the fig tree, and that's er earlier in the chapter. It, we're in that generation. The question is, did it start in 48, or did the fig tree blossom in 68? I'm just asking. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Okay, and heaven and earth pass away after the thousand years millennial reign. New paragraph. But of that day and hour, no one knows. Not even the angels of heaven nor the Son, but the Father alone. Now, a lot of people thought he was talking about when heaven and earth pass away. However, in Matthew 25, verse 13, after the parable of the virgins, it says in verse 13 that, uh, well, I could go there, then it would mess me up. It says that, so be, be aware then because no man knows the day or the hour. However it's worded. So that kind of tells you, he means when I come for my bride. That's another clue that we know he's coming for his bride. All right. For the coming, all right, now, now I'm getting to the meat of this part. For the coming of the Son of Man will be just like the days of Noah. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. And we know that in Gen from Genesis that Noah entered the ark. God shut the door. Seven days later, it started to rain hard. They knew right away, <laughs> within an hour, they were goners. And they did not understand until the flood came and took them all away. So will the coming of the Son of Man be. It'll be quick. And then it'll surprise everybody that's left behind. Because it happened so, like we said, we tried to tell them and they wouldn't listen. So they're going to be like, oh, they didn't understand until the flood came and took them all away. And then what? Then there will be two men in the field. They'll be working. Jobs will be going. One will be taken and one will be left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. Back then, that was their kind of job. Now women do all kind of jobs. One will be taken and one will be left. And I know there's a verse that talks about he takes the chaff, leaves the wheat, puts the wheat in the barn. I believe those are the Jewish people. He'll get rid of all the evil that's left that didn't get destroyed through all of his judgments. And the rest of the chaff will be taken. And the wheat will continue to live and prosper and repopulate the earth. And anybody else that managed to survive 
in little, um, what are they calling them? Safe havens. God will protect them and they will help repopulate the earth. And then everybody will be of one faith under Jesus Christ. And there will be rebellion because they'll be human. Think about it. They're the ones that have to go off on their own because they don't want to obey the laws of Christ that he's going to lay down for the millennium. Because it says that the number will be as the sand of the sea, the seashore that will surround Jerusalem when Satan gets let out of the abyss. At the end of the thousand years, there'll be that many people. So they've, they've been populating. Men and women will turn away eventually. They don't want to go do tabernacles every year. Or they have to suffer drought. And they'll think of that as, oh, woe is me. Why should I have to go to Israel every year? It's too far. Or what, whatever. Who knows why? They can't possibly be happy with Jesus Christ ruling the earth. Anyway, moving on. Be ready for his coming. Therefore, be on the alert, for you do not know which day your Lord is coming. But be sure of this, that if the head of the house had known at what time of the night the thief was coming, he would have been on the alert and would not have allowed his house to be broken into. So we have to stay on the alert. We have to keep looking for the signs. We have to look at the moon phases and the, the feast days coming up and, and be anticipating, could this be the time? Could this be the time? We can't just live our lives thinking, oh, well, it'll happen one day and really not be looking. Thinking, well, when it happens, it happens. Because you're not going to stay ready if you do that. Okay. So I mentioned the parable. You know the parable of the ten virgins is Matthew 25 verses 1 through 13. I suggest you go through that. I'm not going through that or this will be too long. I want to remind you the message uh, to the church of Philadelphia. But at the very end of the message to the church of Sardis. It says, so, uh, verse 3, So remember what you have received and heard, and keep it, and repent. Therefore, if you do not wake up, I will come like a thief, and you will not know at what hour I will come to you. See, there it is again. But you have a few people in Sardis, who have not soiled their garments, and they will walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He who overcomes will thus be clothed in white garments, and I will not erase his name from the book of life. So when you get born again, your name gets written in the Lamb's book of life. Do not mess it up and have it be blotted out. All right, he says, and I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Now comes the message to Philadelphia, verse 7. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write, He who is holy who is true, who has the key of David, who opens and no one will shut, and who shuts and no one opens. And that's what happened when the ark, the, cut, the ark that Noah built, when he went in, God shut the door and no one could open it. Moving on. He says, I know your deeds. 
Behold, deeds. Those are good things you do. Deeds. Good and bad. He's telling this church, I know your deeds. Behold, I have put before you an open door. There's that door again, which no one can shut. Because you have a little power and have kept my word. Notice it doesn't say you have a whole lot of power. You can heal the sick. You can raise the dead. You can this. You can that. You prophesy mightily. It doesn't say that. It says you have a little power. And have kept my word. And have not denied my name. Behold, I will cause those of the synagogue of Satan who say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. I will make them come and bow down at your feet and make them know that I have loved you. Ha! Huh. Because you have kept the word of my perseverance, I also will keep you from the hour of testing that hour which is about to come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth what do you think that test might be how about this if you want to come out of quarantine or get out of your house and socialize all you got to do is take the vaccination and this little uh, gobbledygook we've put together with microchips in, to put in your hand. or They're talking like anywhere, but the Bible says the right hand or the forehead. And I believe they will stick with that. Because they're going to know those are the best places. Somebody's already proven it. And that will prove you have your vaccination. You won't ever have to worry about losing it. And then you can go wherever you want. You can even travel. You can even fly on an airplane if you want to. And best of all, you can go back to work. Why, how tempting will that be? How close are we? You think about it. They're talking about turning things loose and letting people go back to work. Maybe we will before this comes about. I pray so. If it's not, I just know that hour of testing will not come until we're gone. He says, I am coming quickly. Hold fast what you have so that no one will take your crown. You see, that scripture is more true for us today than it ever has been. He who overcomes I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God and he will not go out from it anymore and I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem which comes down out of heaven from my God and my new name. And that could, could all that could be happen in the future after the rapture after the millennial reign or at the beginning of the millennial reign or at the end when he destroys the earth makes a new earth brings down the new Jerusalem from heaven we got to remember the order of things if you don't read through the whole book of Revelation that one paragraph might make you think Oh, God's Jesus is coming back. He's going to destroy the earth. He's going to make a new one. And then the new Jerusalem is going to come down and rest upon the new earth. And he's going to give us a new name and write on us the new name and blah, 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 what I just said. You see, that doesn't happen until after the new, the millennial reign, thousand years. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Now, 
does it, if that is true, we who are considered worthy will be kept from the hour which is about to come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. And what a test it will be. I pray that both raptures happen before it. Last one, Luke 21. All right. Uh, verse 10 it begins things to come. Um, I'm going to let you read that. You should start at 10, things to come, because it starts with nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes, plagues, famines. Well, that's been going on, and it has been caused on purpose by the New World Order for depopulation. All right, we know that. They're wiping out Africa. It's something awful over there. And then there are those. I know people put the mouth on Joyce Myers because she bought an airplane, and maybe she is preaching prosperity now. I don't know. I used to follow her. She helped me a lot. I haven't listened to her in, gosh, oh, seven, eight years. So I don't know what she preaches now. But I know she goes over there to several places, in India and Africa, and helps the impoverished people. A lot of the money from her ministry is really helping build wells, put mosquito nets on their windows, help build housing, concrete block housing, schools. They're getting those kids clothed and educated and fed. And health care, mouth, dental care, all kind of things. Anyway, uh, but there's so many, you know. Anyway, there's going to be all that stuff going on. But before all these things, before all these things, he's talking to another group of people here. Now, who is this? They will lay their hands on you and will persecute you. Before all these things, they will lay their hands on you. That's not talking to us. But he's talking to somebody and will persecute you, delivering you to the synagogues and prisons, bringing you before kings and governors, for my name's sake. I do think he's talking to the apostles. It will lead, or maybe all his followers that step out and preach for him. It will lead to an opportunity for your testimony and possibly to those like over in countries that do not allow Christianity. But he was warning whoever, some of you will go to prison for my sake. So make up your minds not to prepare beforehand to defend yourselves. For I will give you utterance and wisdom which none of your opponents will be able to resist or refute. Now, here goes on to, I think, he skips to maybe another group, or it could be the same. But you will be betrayed even by parents and brothers and relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. Does that not sound like Muslim territory? It does to me. And you will be hated by all because of my name. Well, it's coming to that here. Yet not a hair of your head will perish, he says. By your endurance, you will gain your lives. Now it's a new paragraph. But when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, 
then recognized that her desolation is near. Was he talking to them regarding 70 AD? Probably, but is it a double prophecy? Will Jerusalem be surrounded again? If I remember right, she will be. Then those who are in Judea must flee to the mountains, and those who are in the midst of the city must leave, and those who are in the country must not enter the city. That's definitely talking to Israelites who live in Jerusalem. Because these are days of vengeance, so that all things which are written will be fulfilled. Okay, now, when it says, Woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babies in those days, for there will be great distress upon the land and wrath to this people. Why? Because they're going to pay, Jesus will just take them out. All the babies, including those in utero, disappear right in front of their mamas. They'll find themselves no longer pregnant. That's why people sit, would teach you and say, oh, who? it's because he's saying, pray that you're not pregnant or nursing because you're going to have to flee and it's going to be really hard to flee when you got to nurse a baby or hold a little baby. Nuh-uh. Your babies will be gone. And they will fall by the edge of the sword and will be led captive. This is the people. The, the people that are in the city that didn't leave. They will be led captive into all the nations, and Jerusalem will be trampled underfoot by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. That's what leads me to think that part refers to 70 A.D. It doesn't all have to do with the same bunch of people at the same time. And now it talks about the return of Christ. But this is getting on and on, so I'm just going to skip to the good part. 36. But keep on the alert at all times, praying that you may have strength to escape all these things that are about to take place and to stand before the Son of Man. Now, this particular verse, I prefer to use the King James Version because I don't think it's a matter of having enough strength. If that were the case, there's no way I would be doing it. There's no way a lot of you would be going. We won't have the strength in this body to escape, to run. Listen to this. For this is the King James Version. Watch ye therefore and pray always. Say it with me. That ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass. And to stand before the Son of Man. We're not just going to escape to a... What did I call them earlier? Safe haven. We're not just going to escape to a secluded area in the woods and manage to eat berries and fish till Jesus comes. No. We're going to stand before the Son of Man. That means we're in heaven. So please be, be careful of falling into fear with these so-called words from the Lord where we have to go through more tribulation along with everybody else. The only way we can do that is to be raptured 
transfigured, get our glorified bodies, and be sent back to help the rest of the church and whoever will get ready for the second rapture. And we can help them escape uh, bombs, whatever, bring them back to life, put limbs back on, miraculously heal them, whatever is needed while preaching the gospel, feeding them, finding a little bit of food and turning it into enough for a huge mass of people just like Jesus did. And they will believe like the people did in the days of Jesus. The only way that can happen is for everybody to have a healthy ability to do these things. We will have to have, a lot of us, I know a lot of you have chronic illness, severe pain, you're going through stuff, you don't have the money to go buy a decent pair of boots to, to run in. I mean, come on. Seriously? How far will my wheelchair get me? Not very far. Maybe a couple, three miles before. I don't know. I've never tried to take it far. I came back from the hospital clinic by myself one time. And I was there too late to get a ride. It's a mile. I had plenty of batteries, so maybe I could go 10 miles. But the point is, we will be in our glorified bodies if we're going to be here to help, which is what I believe. And according to what I've received from the Lord and others, many others. So I'm just telling you all of this to remind you what you already know, but these messages are coming out, and I believe they're doing exactly what the government is doing. And Satan's behind it, and he's got his little minions deceiving God's servants. Why? I have begged him not to let me hear from a deceiving spirit ever again. I haven't gotten a message in I don't know when. So does that mean everything? I, You know, I don't think all my messages were. I know they weren't because of what I went through after that message on the two raptures. I know that was from God. And the way I said, Lord, I, I you need to tell me who you are. And that message I reshared lately about pets going to heaven how he said, I am your Savior, I'm your Lord, I am that I am, and I don't remember what all, but I don't think Satan or a demon would be allowed to say those things. Anyway, I'm going to end it here, because look how long this has been. Probably nobody will watch it, because it's too long, but I hope you will. I plead the blood of Jesus over this video, and myself and the internet connection, and over my computer and I plead the blood of Jesus over each and every single one of you I love you all so much and I pray for you every night and I thank you so much for your prayers such kind words I thank you for all your kind comments and I plead the blood over you and your devices and your internet connections. And with that, I'm going to say bye for now. I will talk to you later.